Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. These days more and more devices and sensors run on 3.3 volt. There are many possibilities to power these modules. Today I want to concentrate on the five possibilities to power these modules for mobile applications and find out which is the best. Because we all love ESP8266, I use this chip as an example. According to the datasheet, ESP8266 modules have an operating voltage of 3 to 3.6 volt, which is about 3.3 volt plus and minus 10%. What kind of technologies do we have to fulfill these needs? The first technology is alkaline. These batteries have a nominal voltage of 1.5 volt. In reality, they start at 1.5 and end at about 1 volt. Here we can use either two or three cells. With two cells, we are at the low side of the specifications. This works with some modules, but if we stop operation at 2.5 volts, we only used about 50% of the energy of the battery. The capacity of an AA battery is about 3400 mAh. But if we only can use half, this is quite expensive because alkaline batteries are not rechargeable, at least according to the books. If we use three batteries, we get 4.5 volt and are definitely way above specs. Therefore, we need a 3.3 volt low dropout or LDO regulator, which kills more than 10% of the capacity. And at the end of the life, the regulator shortens the useful voltage range because it always needs the dropout voltage. So the overall loss capacity is in the range of 20%. If you want to learn more about LDO regulators, you can watch my video number 58. The second technology is nickel cadmium. Its voltage starts at 1.4 volt and ends at about 1 volt. Most of the time it is about 1.2 to 1.3 volt. With two cells we get only about 2.5 volts, which is not enough. With three cells we get 3.6 volt average, which is okay. But if we look at the discharge curve, we see that the voltage begins at about 1.38 volts. 3 times 1.38 volt is 4.14 volt. This is too high for the specifications of many modules, especially the ESP8266. Viewers told me that they were able to run the ESP with more than 4 volt, but I had examples which did not run stable at this voltage. So this configuration should not be connected directly to 3.3 volt chips. And we need an LDO regulator too with a 20% waste. The capacity of a nickel cadmium AA battery is less than 1000 mAh and they are rechargeable. In order to get more capacity, we go on to technology number three, the nickel metal hybrid batteries. Their voltage curve is very similar to the nickel cadmium batteries. The capacity, however, is more than the double and they are also rechargeable. Technology number four is well known to most of us. It is LiPo. This technology does not come in AAA or AA packages because their voltage is three times higher and many devices would be roasted if consumer would take them for 1.5 volt types. If you look now at their discharge curve, we see that they start at 4.1 volt and end at about 2.8. Here again, we need an LDO voltage regulator to protect our devices. Also here, 20% of the capacity is used by the regulator. One advantage of this technology is that we get many different packages and sizes. Especially the rectangular sizes fit often very good into project boxes. Recently, I discovered another battery technology, LiFepo4. This is technology number five and it is new to me. Also, not many offers exist on AliExpress compared with the lithium cells. You get them in AA, in 18650 and also in rectangular packs. The danger of mixing them with 1.5 volt batteries is real here. Their voltage starts at 3.3 volt and ends at 2 volt. 
most of the time it is around 3.2 volt if you do not need high currents. This discharge curve fits our needs ideally. No voltage regulator is necessary. Their capacity is smaller than the capacity of the LiPo, but because we do not need a regulator, we also do not lose energy. I recently bought four AA cells of 700 mAh. I tested them and all had more than 700 mAh. I also got a rectangular battery with a capacity of 4000 mAh. After testing, I discovered that it only has 1700 mAh. So, this is another example of fake capacity descriptions. To calculate the relative capacity, I use a simple formula. Where available, I use AA batteries. I use the needed number of cells and add the 20% avoided waste of the regulator if none is needed. Then, I compare the milliampere hours because with all configurations, the device gets about 3.3 volt and uses about the same current. So a battery with double the milliampere hours will also last double the time. For LiPo, I compare the volume of three alkaline cells with a volume of one 18650. The volume of three alkaline batteries is about double of the 18650 battery. The LiPo 4 batteries have the same size as the alkalines, but we need only one instead of three to power our 3.3 volt device. The milliampere hour is one fifth of alkaline, so we get 60% capacity compared to the alkaline battery. And we can add the 20% of the absent regulator and therefore get about 80%. Summarized, we have the following five possibilities to power 3.3 volt logic devices. From a capacity point, LiPo is the clear leader, and it is also rechargeable. From the point of hassle-free, there are two leaders. First, the alkaline for low-power devices, because it does not need any protection or caution. You just replace them if needed. They also do not explode. So, if you extensively use the deep sleep of the ESP, it could be a good solution. Second, it is the LiFePO4 for higher power devices, where you want the possibility to, of recharging. This battery can be directly connected to the device without any regulator. And I load them with my bench power supply set to 3.6 volt and with a current limit of 500 milliampere. This is between normal and fast charge. As mentioned before, I even got two connector batteries which are empty cells with a direct wire from plus to minus. These connectors can be used to replace two alkalines with one LiFePO4 battery and one connector. Thanks for watching. I hope this episode was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye.